The term color spaces is interchangeable with the term color modes. It simply states the color value method you are using to work on your images from RGB, CMYK, grayscale, and the like. Bit depth is a measure of how much color information is contained within each pixel of an image. One bit simply means on or off, black or white. Eight bit for color is 256 values of color in the prism and 8-bit for grayscale is 256 values of gray from light gray all the way to dark gray. A really good way to grasp the whole bit thing is to remember how video game systems are rated in terms of graphics capability. Remember the old Nintendo Entertainment System? That system was an 8-bit system which is why Mario and Link from the Zelda series looked like jaggedy boxes. Then we jumped to the Super 16-bit era with the release of the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. All of a sudden we were seeing more colors and more pixels. These days, video game systems are able to display so many pixels, we are talking about HD, or high definition gaming now, with the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. No more little boxy guys with boxy hats and swords. The same kind of thing applies to today's imaging software. Pixels are no longer an issue, and now you can work in 32-bit mode, camera raw, and who knows what's coming down the pike next. So. What on earth do all these crazy acronyms such as RGB and CMYK stand for anyway? Let's talk about them. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. These are the colors displayed by your computer monitor and your TV. It is the combinations of these three colors that provide you with all the colors you see when watching a movie online or a movie on your TV. Three measly colors to get 16.7 million. Trust me, I wasn't the one who did the math on this one. I'm going to go to my channels palette real fast and show you. If I click on channels, you see that I have CMYK mode right now. What I'm going to do is go to image mode and I'm going to switch this to RGB. What we're looking at here are the first channel which shows all three colors mixed together to give us this nice color image. I can click on red to see the red pixels in this image, the green pixels in the image, and the blue pixels in the image. And once again, when these three are mixed we come up with RGB. Alright, now let's go ahead and talk about how RGB space works. RGB uses what is known as additive color where the three primary colors of red, green, and blue are added together in various combinations to give you the colors on your screen. The primary use of RGB color space is when you plan to have your graphics, game, film, websites, and so on viewed only on a computer or TV screen. RGB is not what most professionals use to take a document to press. That is where our next model comes in. CMYK stands for the four colors of ink used by printers. They are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The K because B was already spoken for in the RGB color space and RGB told me that it wasn't sharing B with CMYK. Anyway. CMYK is what designers use to send documents to professional printers for magazines, posters, and the like. It is the CMYK model that gives the term four color printing its meaning. Once again, I'll go back to my channels and I'll go to my image mode and I'll go ahead and change this back to CMYK. And now we see we have four different channels here. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now think of cyan as kind of a bluish magenta is kind of red, purplish, yellow of course, and black. And all of these mixed together to give us our CMYK for four color printing. Quite the opposite of RGB, the CMYK model is subtractive, meaning mixing colors leads to darker colors, heading towards black, and subtracting leads to lighter colors, leading towards white. Now grayscale lacks actual colors in the prism, but instead represents 256 values of gray, Grayscale is great to use when going for that classic vintage look or mixing parts of a color image with gray for emphasis on a part of the image. Let's go ahead and convert this image to grayscale. I'll move this over. Image, mode, grayscale. And normally you get a warning that says, hey, do you want to discard this color information? Are you absolutely sure? Or you can go ahead and say, don't show me this ever again in your life. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we have a grayscale image. And once again, this would be really nice to have maybe the hammock or maybe the water in full color and then have the rest of this in gray to emphasize something for an ad. 
As you saw, converting images from one color space to another is achieved through the image menu. I can take any image and convert it quite easily through the menu here to go from grayscale, duotone, index, and so on. And each one of these modes has their use. Index is usually used for web graphics, RGB as I mentioned for screen, CMYK for printing. Lab color is the mode that Photoshop automatically goes to when you're converting from one color mode to another. So I really don't use this too much. And we also have bitmap which is black and white, all the way black and white. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I go ahead and leave the resolution at 72, click OK, and now we have on or off. There are no tonal gradations at all. It's either black or it's white. And this is nice as well to get this nice vintage look or some kind of special effects. One thing I want to mention before ending this lesson is that sometimes when you're in CMYK mode, a lot of the special effects filters don't appear. And that's because a lot of the filters only work in RGB. So if that alarms you, just switch to RGB, add your filters, special effects, and then go back to CMYK if you're going to press.